I'm Per Eriksson. So here we are in Sweden. We are at Artipelag, an art museum on the outskirt of the capital Stockholm. There will be an exhibition called Signature Women, and it's about the heritage of the female in art in Sweden. So here we are in Stockholm, and we are here to meet uh, with the fashion designer Ann-Sophie Back. And we are here to hear about her way of creating her own fashion, going her own path, and with a strive to create a fashion that doesn't deal with the mainstream, but going her own way. If you were to explain for somebody that's never ever seen your fashion, what would you say? Uh, that it's not there to flatter you, that it's more about asking questions than giving you an answer, that you have to be quite brave to wear it. You can't be interested in pleasing other people or yourself for that matter. You have to sort of have a bit of humor and uh, be disrespectful about yourself to appreciate it. How did it all start? Why did you get interested in design in the very first place? It was something that my parents were not into. So I think it was a way to be different to them. What in design was the trigger? With fashion, it's probably that you're never quite finished, that it's always evolving and changing, and uh, that it's something that we all these days have to engage. You have to get dressed, and it's almost impossible not to be fashionable, a way of communicating who you, who you are or who you're not. As a young person being interested in design and fashion, how did you find a school. Growing up in Sweden, it was Beckman's School of Design that was the only option. And then after Beckman's, I went to St. Martin's in London. My design heroes back then, or design hero, was Alexander McQueen, and I read somewhere that he went there. Going to school, uh, striving to get your own identity as a designer and uh, getting your own language. The teachers at the school, how helpful were they? I can't really, I don't really know. I don't think it's because of the teachers. Uh, I think it's also about the other students and what they, they are doing and kind of defining yourself. Also what I didn't find in fashion at the time was it was very glamorous and very perfectionist and I couldn't really identify myself with that. I thought I would, but then in the end I couldn't. I did things that were anti-perfectionist and that sort of worked with flaws or uh, mistakes or insecurities. Finding your own language or your own universe, how did you go about to do that? I didn't, I didn't know what to do, I had no idea. So I sort of followed the other students because I was too shy to, to ask. <laughs> I'm like, oh, they go to the library. Oh, they look in books. Okay, I'll do that. Uh, looking back to those years, finding your own language or your own world, your own universe, so to speak, in design. If you were to define that now, how would you do that? It was a sort of anti-glamour, anti-perfectionism and where I was playing with my own insecurities and mistakes and embarrassments and things like that. Like the first, for example, the first ready to wear collection that I did was about how the underwear sort of when you dress wrong and your underwear shines through or you your uh, skirt gets caught up in your knickers, for example. You created your own universe pretty early in your career, so to speak. How did you take that into the professional scene? I mean, most people use dress as a kind of... They try, try and cover up their insecurities, whereas I wanted to show them, sort of. So it wasn't always easy to uh, sell the idea of awkwardness. Lifestyle is not something that interests me. I don't want to sell a solution to people. I want to more ask questions. Being part of the fashion world uh, is a tough challenge. Making collections 
once a year or twice a year. Being on the catwalk, as we are now, in the catwalk place. How did you go about and handle that? I think it's an easier process designing. The more experience you get, it's less painful and the editing process is is a lot quicker. I know I know sooner in the process if an idea is good or not, or if I have done enough research to build a whole collection around an idea, for example. Now I've had um, two years that I haven't done any collections as such. I still go back to some of the themes that I've worked on before. It's really a red thread. Uh, it's a style that has evolved. But the process, process of pr making it is is easier and it's also a lot what you see in the fashion world what designers are doing are things that I did 10 years ago or 15 years ago that kind of pops up again it's very current what I did because I've never been sort of trendy my things have never yeah that they're, they're not worn out because trends get worn out and especially with social media but there's weirdly timeless and I didn't know that until I sort of start, started looking back at what I've done. Creating a timeless fashion is the ultimate goal, I guess, for any designer. Not knowing what you were doing. If you would try to define what is timeless fashion design? I've never defined that, really. Um, for me, timeless has always stood for boring. I don't think that's true <laughs> about what I've done. Well, when it's like so clean and unoffensive, that's what I would def that's what I would think. That's the cliche for me what what timeless is. Being brave enough to go your own path and not flirt too much with the establishment in the fashion world. How did you handle that? I don't think I, I had a choice. If I would have felt that I was good at pleasing the mainstream, then I might have done it. But it's never been my strength. And I've also been interested in challenging myself uh, and not being entirely sure and safe in what I'm doing. So not being safe is where I'm safe, sort of. Then I feel, when I'm uncomfortable, I feel the most secure. If you were to give an advice to a young person uh, that wants to be a fashion designer like yourself, what would you say? I used to say that you need to be sure that you're doing something that is unique, otherwise there's no point. But I'm not even sure that's true anymore, so I, I don't know. Mm -hmm.